Welcome back, everybody, to the CDL. This is, of course, the University of Texas versus Texas A&M. I'd like to extend an apology um, regarding the spectator uh, feature implemented in these games. There's a little miscommunication with the admins. Uh, I turned off the spectating feature for the game. What I really wanted was I didn't want any. So I didn't really want too many obs or really any obs in the game. You don't really need to, honestly. If you want to spec in the game client, that's 100% fine to me. Radiant but when you're obsing, you're getting instant, you know, information. I don't know who is observing. I don't know what they might be telling the other teams via Steam, via uh, uh, Mumble, you know, things of that nature. I don't want to come across as negative and you know not want you to like really enjoy from the game client. Uh, it's just sort of a miscommunication. So I really apologize. That's Dire our bad. Team ban. Hopefully you guys can watch in game now, and you'll appreciate that. I hope. If not, you can keep watching on the stream. That's good, too. Or if you don't want to watch it all, that's fine. And then I'm sure there's other things going Radiant on for you. Team ban. People telling me I was a negative caster. Uh, I'm sorry. I'll try not to be as judgmental about their pickups. I keep forgetting that this is an amateur tournament. I'll try to be a little bit more professional. I mean, they played a really well game. They like the game was played extremely well from both sides. I really have nothing to complain about. It, I mean, Qual had an excellent pickup on that faceless void. His farm was pretty good, really good actually, better than mine for sure. Uh, I mean, and of course the build was great. I was wondering why he would go for a battle fury, but the AOE damage was nice. The farm really skyrocketed once he got it. So I thought it was a good pickup. Undying and Rubik will be the first ban on the side of A&M. Uh, on the side of UT, they'll go for Furion once again in Darkseer. Not really wanting to play against that global presence of the Furion, understandably so. Templar Assassin picked up on the University of Texas. And Jikiro on the side of A&M. Batrider is available. Will they go for it is the question. And remember, Templar Assassin has a tough time against that Batrider, but that doesn't mean that the game is unwinnable. If you have the... Uh, if you have a, a game against a bat rider. Ten seconds remaining. But they do pick up the Jikiro. Five seconds whereas remaining. UT had it in the last game and it was really strong for them. They had a bunch of good ice paths. Reserve time. Queen, Queen of Pain will be the pickup though. Pain. And this is a nice Radiant pickup against the Templar pick. Assassin. Shadow Strike has a little bit of dot damage against the Templar Assassin in the mid lane. We saw this in the last game as an off lane Queen of Pain and uh, she didn't really get harassed too often. But they really didn't set up too many team fights, which was the problem. This game, they should be looking for some better luck here. And with this Templar Assassin pickup, it's certainly going to probably... I don't want to say certainly, because there's nothing certain in Dota 2, but it's probably going to be set in the mid lane. I, I, there's a high probability of that happening. Um, and with this pickup, they can go for a bunch of different things now. With this hard, uh, with this really nice mid-game carry pickup with the ganking, uh, they can go for something a little bit more hard carry. Uh, into the late game. Something like a Faceless Void again with Qual. The problem is if you have a Templar Assassin with the Chronosphere, you you can't really get too much range. There's not much damage you can throw out with the Bat Templar Assassin. Instead, they'll pick up the Bat Rider, which is a huge Radiant pickup because not only do they essentially make sure that A&M doesn't get it, they also have that really great initiation. The Blink into a Lasso is really huge. The Sticky Napalm does so much damage early on. He's a great mid lane hero, but also a very good offlaner, which is what they might be thinking Dying right now. Anti-Mage will be the next pickup on the side of the uh, University of Texas. So really, this is going to be a strong game on the side of University of Texas. They've got the mid-game covered. They've got the late-game covered with the Anti-Mage. Now what they need is to flesh out this tri-lane with the Anti-Mage in it. Or they can go a dual lane. And even throw something like um, Bat Rider in the off lane is what I'm thinking about Templar Assassin in the mid, Anti Mage, and that easy lane. And of course, uh, they'll have a support there to babysit him, maybe even another for a tri lane. Or they'll send something like an Enigma in the jungle to get some farm and, of course, some experience really quick and then make it into a pseudo tri lane later on. And I wouldn't put it past them. University of Texas has, uh, they've got a lot of great game knowledge. And I'm pretty sure at this point, um, they're looking strong. They've looked strong, I should say, throughout the first game. And with the second game, they've got some great pickups here. Not to say that AM doesn't. Of course, Shakiro can really turn around a team fight very quickly. Of course, Sonic Wave as well. A well-placed Sonic Wave could be absolutely devastating. 
You guys, I'm sure, all Wind know that. You've played against service. enough Queen of Pains to realize, yeah, that scream hurts Radiant a lot. Of, you know, it's really not fun to play against. Windrunner will be the next pickup on the side of AMM. And I like this pickup because not enough people go Windrunner. The Shackle Shots can be absolutely fantastic, and I think that they'll be able to get a few of them. I would not be surprised to see somebody like Alienated play it. The last game, he showed pretty nice skill with his Sun Strikes. Flint Flossy as well. He had a bunch of really great uh, Split Earths. And with Windrunner throwing out that Shackle Shot, we could see a lot of really great plays here. Now, what this means is I think they'll send the Windrunner into the off lane right now. They could use Windrunner as mid or as actually even a support, and that's really the great versatility of Windrunner. But I imagine it would be sent into the off lane with Chikiro supporting a carry and Queen of Pain mid this time around. It means they will need to pick up a carry and a support, so I think University of Texas will realize this. They're taking a lot of time once again with the reserve time. But it worked out for them in the uh, long run. I believe they took a long time in the first game as well, so we'll see what they decide to pick up. Thirty-nine seconds right now. Once again, this is the CDL A&M versus uh, University of Texas. I believe it's the Aggies versus the Longhorns. I'm pretty sure A&M's the Aggies. I could be wrong though, and if I am, I feel like an idiot, so I apologize in advance. A little Big Twelve action going on right now. There's the ban. It will be the Chaos Knight this time around. Dire team ban. Very strong hero, even with a little bit of farm. But they Radiant had a great amount of disables ban. on him, and that was really the the shutdown there. And I'm and and I love the ban out from an AM banning that Rubik because the Rubik was really the one that was really causing the havoc early and mid game, stealing all of those spells, getting a ton of kills. Kiwi played it, Kawik had played it really really well. Someone told me in chat how to pronounce it, but I forgot already. So, I mean, guys, if I pronounce the names wrong, I apologize, but. Names get mispronounced all the time. You look at AC, pronouncing names, and even Toby as well. Casters Ten will mispronounce names from remaining. time to time. I'm not going to get every name right. Five seconds remaining. 13 seconds on reserve time for University of Texas. Ban will be Enigma this time around. Lich going to be the ban on A&M. Radiant team ban. And uh, next bands will be coming out. Dire team ban. Good Tidehunter ban. Very frustrating to play against. Especially with this lineup of Queen of Pain. Uh, a Tidehunter Ravage into a Queen of Pain Sonic Wave could be Radiant. really frustrating to deal with. And then the Venomancer will be the last ban Dire out here. Sand King's the pickup on the side of University of Texas. Excellent pickup. Epicenter will be frustrating. Burrow Strike as well. Assuming they they can get everybody in um, in that Epicenter, it's going to be you know really really annoying. The thing is, they really don't have a whole lot of like. I'm thinking like really what you like to try to do with the Sand King is if you have got the Darkster, which is probably not likely, and vacuum into that Epicenter, you know, with that Burrow Strike. So everyone three. really has to be clumped up because on their own right even now, because there's not a whole Night lot of Stalker. movement uh, enabling abilities here on the side of University of Texas. Night Stalker will be the pickup from AM and M right now. That's a really great pickup. It's going to silence the anti-mage, it's going to silence the bat rider, going to silence the it's going to silence everybody. And he couldn't and with the squishy heroes on this team, they could go down very quickly. Ancient apparition will be the last pickup though. And of course that ice blast making it extremely difficult for you to push in. But not when you have Death Prophet Ultimate Exorcism really doing a lot of the damage there. A lot of silences on the side of AM right now. A lot of silences. You've got the silence from the Night Stalker and the silence from, of course, the uh, Death Prophet right now. And that's going to look to be putting Batrider and Sand King in a precarious position. Once again, this is the CDL. I'm Mont bringing you another game. It's a little bit late here, so I've been a little bit uh, grouchy, I should say, in my last cast, so I apologize for that. This is going to be the University of Texas Longhorns versus the uh, Texas A&M Aggies. Once again, if it's not Aggies, I feel like an absolute idiot. So we will see Flint Flossy on the Jakiro this time around. Hysteria will be on the Death Prophet. And actually going into the top lane, looks like it will be a hard carry Death Prophet right now. Queen of Pain will be sent mid. 
Actually, a solo lane Death Prophet into the easy lane. Alienated from the masses will be playing the Queen of Pain this time around. Meanwhile, we see Legendary Dodo on the Windrunner. Twelfth man, Yolo 2012 on the Night Sucker. And, of course, we already talked about Flip Flossy. So this is the tri lane that they're going to be running. Twelfth man should be getting over the farm here. Legendary Dodo with these uh, shackle shots will be actually setting a lot of stuff up here. And then, of course, the Ice Path to follow up as well. Plus, the, uh, the Void is a nice slow. And it's going to be a frustrating tougher tri lane to deal with. So this is probably a stronger tri lane, at least in my opinion. The tri lane here will be... Uh, on the side of UT, it'll be Qual on the Anti-Mage. We'll see Donald on the Ancient Apparition. Of course, Sand King on the, uh, or excuse me, Too Strong on the Sand King. This is also a good try lane. You've got the Impale into the Cold Feet, and that's going to be difficult to deal with. And, of course, the Mana Burn followed up by Mana Void when he gets enough uh, levels there. The Quicked will be on the Templar Assassin in the mid lane, and we're going to see Refinery on the Bat Rider. And that's the side of University of Texas. So, Solo Bat Rider against the Solo Death Prophet. Getting last hits from afar with the Crypt Swarm will be nice. Level 6, though, have to be careful. We will see the Flaming Lasso be a really devastating effect on Hysteria. Plus all the, uh, all the Sick and Apom popped up. The real problem is, though, you have to get very close for this Flaming Lasso to initiate. So if Hysteria sort of senses anything out of the ordinary here, he'll probably just throw that Silence up and uh, negate it for at least a few seconds before he gets back to Tower Range or what have you. But I think Refinery should have a good time over here. And then again, the last hitting ability. He'll have to avoid the Crypt Swarms. That's really what he's going to have to look out for. So over here in the bottom lane, this is going to be a very bloody battle early on, which I'm excited to see. I think there's going to be a lot of different damage heading out early on. They might actually rotate and go for tri lane against a, a solo lane just to you know make it easier on the carries. But that being said, if that doesn't happen, we're going to see a lot of first blood happening here pretty quickly. Either that... Actually, it could happen in any lane, really. I would be surprised to see Alienated from the Masses go down first. He actually went for the Shadow Strike first, so Quick is actually going to get harassed early on. And there goes the Refraction popped off already from the Shadow Strike. So Quick is going to have a little bit of a tough time. Meanwhile, we actually see an Ice Path initiation into the bottom lane. Don Donald will actually get out just barely too strong here as well. Flint Flossy looking for another one. It's in four seconds, so this is how they're going to zone them out, making sure they can't come through the jungle. So Too Strunk and Donald are actually going to have to stay in the lane, which gives them a little bit of an absentee vision here. Flint Flossy and Legendary Dodo will be able to Ice Path Initiate plus Shackle Shot from the jungle if they so, cho so choose to. But I don't think that's going to happen. I think they're going to wait before they try to go on anything right now. Mid lane, already seeing some nice initiation from the alienated the masses right now. Wicked's taking a lot of damage. Shadow Strike being very annoying. It's actually helped him pull, though, to the tower right now. But Wicked should be popping up a salve. Alienated looking for a kill though. Once first blood, Refraction is up. There's going to be a blink. Plus, nice meld actually doing a bit of damage, but Refraction will pop up. Shadow Strike is going to get popped up real quick though. And Alienated is just going to back off. So no first blood just yet in that lane anyway. Qual and Donald taking a little bit of damage here from the creeps or from uh, Legendary Dodo. I'm not sure. He's actually also taking damage from the right close to Ancient Apparition. And this is going to get bloody very quickly. Too strong and flossy looking at each other from across the way, Mexican standoff style. And they keep backing and forth and looking for something. Not nothing happening just yet, though. That's the real, uh, that's the real factor here. Once we see an initiation, it could almost certainly guarantee at least one kill. I'd be surprised if we don't see any. From flossy using the trees to his advantage just to try to really get not seen here. A bit of damage going on to too strong right now from Flint flossy up in the top lane refinery doing pretty well uh so is the death prophet it's here with five last hits four on the refinery right now he's not really spamming a sticky napalm but he uh he's trying to conserve mana obviously he doesn't want to spam it too much he doesn't want to really he doesn't have any regen which is a real problem for his mana quick it has no regen left 207 health with refraction will be nice actually going for 111 not really Getting two points in refraction before getting uh, the, that first point in meld. We saw him actually get the skill point in meld, I think, just to survive against uh, Alienated early on. We actually see a bottle uh, up on the Queen of Pain. Meanwhile, Cold Feet down here in the bottom lane. Flint Flossy taking a bit of damage will not stun him. There's going to be the Ice Path onto one with Beyond Donald right now. Just a little bit of counter initiation there. Nothing going on. We see Queen of Pain actually getting pinged out here. Thinking they're saying, yeah. Templar Assassin saying, yeah, Alienated, uh, he's probably down there with uh, some sort of rune, so you should be careful. But now he's back in the mid lane, and uh, 
they can breathe a sigh of, sigh of relief down to the bottom lane, but Quicken cannot. He actually does get his bottle, though, so he has that going for him. He's actually got two slippers of agility. He's going to be the initiation from the Shadow Strike. Cyblade's doing some damage from Alienate as well, but Quicken taking a lot of damage. Will there be enough to get the kill here? Refraction will pop off in just a second. Now uh, Alienate diving real hard. Doesn't get the screen pain damage, and he's just going to back off after he realizes that it's not going to do anything. 12th man with the uh, double... Gauntlets right now looking for that urn, at least in the first night. His farm is uh, 13 last hits, so doing pretty well right now. 16 is actually the most in the game for the Templar Assassin. 16 up here on the top end for Hysteria as well, so he's doing pretty well. This is interesting because you really don't see this. It looks like the uh, Hysteria and uh, Night Stalker are going to be mid-game carries, and they don't really have anything hard game you know, for later on. They've got a lot of you know early damage from a lot of these heroes. And the question is, can... The Anti-Mage get enough farm here. Can Paul get enough farm to really negate a lot of this? He's actually only got four last hits right now, so this tri is going really well for AM. Meanwhile, double damage rune is bottled. He'll head back rune, uh, mid with that rune. We're finally up in the top against Hysteria. Last hits are 12 for him, 20 for the side of the Death Prophet, but of course, with Crypt Swarm, it makes it really easy to get those last hits, assuming they're low enough. He's actually at level 3 right now. Going to skill up Exorcism as well. I hope you guys are enjoying the game. Please let me know if anything's going on wrong in the cast, whether it's the stream, my casting. Give me some feedback if you really use it. Meanwhile, First Blood will actually go. We caught the tail end of that. There's going to be a burst strike. Going to stop, though. First Blood was going on the Ancient Apparition. Queen of Pain activating DD in the middle lane. Meanwhile, Too Strong taking a bunch of damage from 12th Man. There's going to be a power shot, and Too Strong taking a lot of damage. Body block going to fly, but there's the Void onto the Night Stalker. Ice Path going out, taking Paul out a little bit, and he's taking a bunch of damage as well. In the mid lane, nothing going on just yet. I'll check back in the bottom lane real quick. Hysteria. Going for some damage on Refinery right now. So it was two for nothing there. Two strunk going down as well as Donald with the first blood. Now who got those kills is the question. It was Night Stalker and the Windrunner getting the first blood. So Night Stalker getting some farm even before the first night is actually always a scary thing. We'll have to see how he uses it. He's actually going to head back though. He's pretty low. Queen of Pain. Armor reduction from Meld. Wicked staying in here despite the fact that he's very low is actually bottle clone right now. Death Prophet is going to get a kill here on the solo bat rider. Using the Crypt Swarm. I don't think Nexusism wasn't used there. Not enough mana. Nor is it on cooldown, so. Things coming out here. Void onto Donald. There's the ice path coming in. What the silence? And there's going to be a nice jack shot plus the power shot. Dota will get the kill. Four for nothing on the side of AM. And they're having a really good start. Looking at the grass here real quick. Yeah, 1500 for experience, 2000 for gold. They're looking very strong here. And Quicked looking for some sort of gank. Meanwhile, he'll find Alienated. There's a nice melt damage. He might just blink out of there. He's got the blink. He's going to pop the haze. Now they're actually going to try to turn this. Alienated is going to have to back off. Nice ice path, though, from Quicked. Good bait there. Nice jackal shot. Taking a bit of damage. Will melt. They don't have vision, though. That's the problem. So Quicked will stay alive. Looking for a kill on that Queen of Pain. Didn't get it. Good bait out, though. Now Qual getting some room to far. He still only has nine last hits. He's having a really tough time. He's missing some tower last hits. And this is not going to be the farm that he had on that faceless void in that last game. So we'll see if he can come back from this. Exorcism is popped for this tower. It's kind of low right now. Half health, actually below it. Refinery as well with that lasso. Could be looking for a kill or a potential gank pretty soon. Not sure. So still four for nothing right now. Alienated. With the boots, with the uh, bottle. Looking for probably treads to finish up relatively soon. Wicked, Maybe going phase boots. I don't know if there's anything on the courier. Maybe going wraith bands with those two slippers. We'll have to see. Poor man shield up on anti-mage. Still not a lot of whole, whole lot of farm there. He could be going for ring of health as soon as he gets to 875 in that uh, side shop. And this lane gets pushed back out. Knight is uh, upon us right now, and 12th man has phase boots. We'll be getting that earned really soon, and this is going to be the scary point. They're still letting him farm, surprisingly enough. Um, once he starts ganking, though, it's going to be scary. Once they play as 5, or he just roams into another lane, he could be getting a lot of kills. Whether it's on Templar Assassin, who has the meld, by the way, when they need just to kill her, kind of. Or Refinery, who has Firefly. He's got a lot of escape mechanism. Or they could just get a kill here in this lane against one of these heroes. Probably not Qual. They do have that silence, which is the important thing. And th during the night, it has a five-second silence, which is huge. Only three during the day. And at level uh, four, it's actually an eight-second silence. So that's very frustrating for the Intimage or for anybody else, really. Too strong if he's going to go for an epicenter. 
Donald not so much. There's a nice ice path there onto Donald. Will they fly? There's the void. A lot of damage. Shack shot will latch onto Donald right now. Plus the power shot on the two right now. One more last hit, and he's going to pop itself, I think, but it's gone now. And Legendary Dodo taking a bit of damage. Dole Breath onto two strong. And now we will see Donald live just barely, though. And he doesn't have a TP, but he's got Tanko, so he'll eat them. He'll get back up. Salve on to Sand King right now. They're looking for another point of initiation here. It was a very close kill. They couldn't get Donald, but very, very close. Refinery now going for Ring of Regen. We'll probably be going for uh, the Tranquil Boots and maybe into a Force Staff, which is a kind of a common build, which is being a very nice build as well. Crypt Swarm onto the Batrider. Nice place by Hysteria there. Meanwhile, down on the bottom lane, Ancient Apparition actually getting a kill on the Windrunner with the Cold Feet there. Plus, the, of course, the uh, the Ice Vortex as well, helping out. Meanwhile, we're actually going to see uh, Illusions from Mel doing a bit of damage, and we're actually going to see Hysteria going down. Queen of Pain going to come in, though. And going to clean everything up with the Ancient Apparition kill with the Sonic that Wave. Was the sound of your Ice Path onto Too Strong to get him out of the Sandstorm there. He's going to be silenced as well. Dual Breath will fly in that. Last hit should go to the Queen of Pain, and in fact does. That was... Let's see, who did Templar Assassin kill? I didn't see her there at all. Oh, it was actually the Death Prophet. They probably used the uh, Bat Rider Lasso to get the kill there, so I apologize for missing that action. Queen of Pain with Arcane Boots first. I saw this a little bit in uh, some of the previous games on the Saturday. I think that's a nice build. Could go really well. Will help you get uh, the Shadow Strike off the blink, of course, and Scream of Pain to spam that will be nice as well to get that last hit, and as well as deal a little bit of damage. See that build into a Bloodstone, it actually might happen. Something like that happened in a previous game that I casted. Quicked is going to get chased by the Exorcism right now of his area. Going to be able to just make it out of there. Of course, the Exorcism will still do a bit of damage. Side Trap will be popped on his area. He's going to be slowed just a little bit. The cool thing about Death Prophet, though, is that she's a very fast hero. Very fast. So that Exorcism Chase is pretty nice. Speed 386. There's actually no boots on Death Prophet. Was it actually almost able to still be able to... Oh, no, I'm just kidding. There's Arcane Boots. What a... How did I miss that? Oh gosh, that was bad. Oh boy. Flint Flossy throwing up a ward here in the mid lane. Legendary Dota with a Null Talisman, regular boots still. Twelfth man should be getting that urn too. I think it's flying to him right now. Or an Ogre Club. It, he actually has the Ogre Club right now. So he's not going to build the urn first, he's going to buy the Ogre Club straight away, and then he'll probably go for BKB. Also could be an Agatum Scepter, which is nice to get that vision, but I don't know. I'm not really inside the mind of 12th Man. And Refinery trying to get some farm here. It's 2 for 6 right now at 11 minutes, and AM sort of has a commanding lead, I think, at this point. Not so commanding, but 3,000 goals pretty nice. Meanwhile, too strong, going to get Shackled. Nice Shackled, plus the power shot. We'll finish everything off there. Quell trying to right click Yolo, but they're going to get a counter to shape with the Ice Path. Dual Breath going to fly as well. He's going to blink out just barely in time. And he's got the Ring of Health right now. Power Shot will miss. He's actually over here in this direction. So the Power Shot was looking for if he blinked out heading back home, but that's not the case. He's going to blink to the tower, and he'll be just fine, at least for the moment until he comes out and they try to find him again. But 12th Man Yellow setting up some nice ganks here with Legendary Dota with the nice Shackle shots. I mean, they, they've been really close to the trees every time, and it's been pretty easy for Legendary Dota not to diminish his accomplishments. He's actually gotten plenty of nice Shackle shots and really good initiation from him. Alienated will pick up something here. Looks like it will be the point booster. Is this going to be the Academy Scepter, or is it going to be the... Meanwhile, Hysteria is taking a ton of Mel damage and side blade damage here from Kawicket. He will get the kill there. Close to the nice secrets. kill. And as I was saying, uh, before that kill happened, it looks like a point booster, so it could be an Scepter, but with these arcane boots, I'm actually kind of inclined to believe point booster. Just to get the extra, extra mana from the little bit of tankiness is always nice. Of course, the respawn time is very good as well. Now we see a rotation coming from Templar Assassin. There's the Psionic Trap. Will not fly, though, because the Alienated does blink out. Meanwhile, Counter Initiation coming in. 12th Man Yellow will actually be uh, impaled, but it doesn't matter because 2 Strong's going to get Shackle Shack. He will fly in, though, into that Sandstorm. And now 12th Man's in a bit of trouble. Do they have a follow-up stun, though, or anything? There's the blink. Nice Mana Void there. Meanwhile, Quicken getting another kill. They're turning this around, but the Ice Path will fly, and the Windrunner will get the kill there. So it's one for two right now. Too strong going down, not really too bad of a deal. Hysteria's here as well. So now we see actually Sidetrap going to be popped on Flint Floss, but here comes Jerry Dota. Oh, nice melt damage. Flint Floss is taking a 10 damage. He'll go down, not before he pops the ice pack. Now Simon's coming on a quick hit as well. 
There's the last one to stare. He's taking a ton of damage right now. And the Templar Assassin will turn around and get another kill on the Jedi Dodo. Hysteria taking so much damage, even though the Exorcism is going to get the kill quick. And no! Oh, anti Mage getting another kill. And now Yolo's in a bad position. He's got no backup right now. We're going to see Queen of Pain rotate just not in time, though. TP coming in from Flint Fossey. And now they're all going to back off right now. So good plays. It's 8 for 8 after that kill there from UT. Really good stuff. Look how much the experience skyrocketed just from those kills. The gold, not so much, though. That'll take some time, but... University of Texas turning this around. Knight has been popped again. They're looking to counter-initiate once more, maybe. They've got three here, but now, uh... Texas will smartly back off. TP coming up into the top lane. This time around, it will be the Death Prophet up here. Heading back, just going to get some farm. Looks like it will be Drums of Endurance. That's going to make it her even faster. Ah, it's so hard to call. I know most of these players are probably male, but I like to call the heroes by their gender, so when I cast the games, it's always him or her instead of, you know, just him most of the time. It's just the little things that bother me. Nice ward placements for both wards up here on the cliff, giving them lots of vision both here up on both of these real, uh, both of these uh, staircases as well into the river. Meanwhile, we see a psionic trap here on Alienated. Bottle is going to be popped up quick. It will be chasing. Nice melt damage. Is there a blink? It is available. Shadow Strike first. Blink. Slow just a little bit. There will be another slow. Nice slow coming in, but will they be able to get this? There's no blink. I don't think I'm quick just yet. He's actually going to CP up because he knows he's going to get initiated on from Flint Fossey. And he will, in fact, TP. There goes the power shot. It's a little too late, though. So, nice place from Quicken, even though he wasn't able to get the kill. Dust was popped as well, by the way. And they're still looking, but I, don't know. I think they realize now that he's out of there. So, a Blink Dagger should be done relatively soon for Quicken, as he got a bunch of those kills down here in this bottom lane. And that gave a little bit of room for Anti Mage to farm. He's still far behind. He's just finishing his Perseverance up at 15 minutes, but that's fine. Once he can get that uh, that Battle Fury, if, as long as the lanes haven't been pushed in, which they most certainly have not, he'll be in a good position. The real problem is once he starts initiating with the silences coming on a lot of his teammates, he's going to be in a rough position. And 12th man, while it is daytime right now, that's still a 3 second silence, and it's level 2, so... Once it is nighttime, it will be a 6 second. Cold feet flying up, there's the ice stuff to counter-initiate, but uh, 12th man yellow will actually get uh, cold feet, but Qual taking a lot of damage. There's the Shasta Chat, there's the silence coming. Qual needs to back off. Too strong. Does that actually have not no epicenter yet because he's not level six yet. But they're able to get out. Too strong will actually use his sandstorm just to uh, juke just for a moment. Too strong could uh, imp a bro strike out if he needs to. Shack will shut onto the tree and the power shot will finish him off though. So nice job by the side of Legendary Dodo. But here comes Kalika. There's going to be a trap and uh, maybe 12th man might be able to get out while looking for the void send. It will go off. It won't get the kill though. And they actually will right click to finish it off. So Kalika able to get the kill there and getting the kill on the Night Stalker is an excellent play. I mean, it's probably better than the Sand King. I mean, the Night Stalker's level. What level is he? He's level 8 at this point, so that's a bit of experience. A bit of gold as well. It's nice for that. Blink Dagger is perched up by the uh, Quicked there on the Templar Assassin. Good stuff. Blink away from the Queen of Pain. Head in and get that Illusion Rune. Quicked is back in the middle lane. The only one tier 1 tower has been pushed, and it's been pushed with Exorcism from Hysteria up in the top lane. Drums will be flying out soon, by the way. Excuse me. Had a little burp there. There's the Claymore for Anti-Mage. Now only needs that Broadsword. And once he has that, then Anti-Mage is going to be farming that jungle like crazy. And then he'll probably not come out until he's ready to really fight. And this is the problem with the Anti-Mage. You need to push these towers while he's not got that real uh, damage output just yet. And when he does, it's going to be scary to fight against that. And in the meantime, though, Quicken's doing a good job of really getting the kills. Because this is such a great mid-game mid hero. So with Alienated of the Masses having that mobility now, so does uh, Quicken here with that Blink Dagger. Wicked and Alienated both sort of staring at each other. Legendary Dodo and Flint Flossy here as well. Down in the bottom lane. Once again, this is the CDL. So hold that thought. We're actually going to look at initiation here on 12th Man Yellow. He's going to pop his uh, ultimate just to get out of there alive. A nice ice path to catch on all of them from Jakiro. So a gank is failed, but that's fine. They made him use the ultimate there. That's going to be on cooldown for a little while. Power shot will fly in. Oh, my chart's not up. I'm sorry. I really apologize. Like, 
Level 13 for the Templar Assassin. So Quicken doing a very good job once again here in the mid lane. Now alienated, taking some damage. Will blink away. Will Quicken follow? He will, in fact. There's the melt damage. There will be another trap being popped. Still, level 3 blink has 3 second cooldown. He's trying to juke. He's trying to juke. And now Quicken's actually in a bad position here. 12th man Yolo looking for the slow. Oh, no. Meld will pop out. They don't have vision. It doesn't look like a blink will come from Quicken here into probably... They're looking to sort of block the path, but they didn't block the path back it over here into back over to the bottom lane. We're actually going to see a kill from Refinery onto uh, Legendary Dodo there. So now we're actually seeing a turn of the tides here from Texas. They're playing really well once again. But meanwhile, in the top lane, Pisteria is pushing this. And so this tower may need to get fortified. Do they have a TP is the question. I'm not sure. They're not looking to go for it just yet. They might trade this tier 2 for the tier 1 and some kills. Meanwhile, Flint Flossie actually going for a dive here and look at the kill on Jakiro. Blink coming in from Alienated. Looking for maybe a Sonic Wave. Going on Refinery. Getting the kill there. But it might go down. DD on the side of Quicked. But he's actually taking a lot of damage plus the silence. Blink in 6. He doesn't have Meld. The Meld is up now. Scream of Pain doing so much damage. So 11 for 10 plus the tower going on the side of Hysteria. Nice bait there. There's going to be a Ring of Health. Bloodstone will be started up soon for the Death Prophet. Oh boy, a lot of action in this game. 19 minutes in, it's 11 to 10. And they just they let the tower go down to the hysteria, so that's uh, it's rough. The experience, however, really going in favor right now of Texas, but the gold is dipping back down to 3K at 20 minutes of the game. Still relatively even, though. We've got some time. And the net worth is actually the highest here from the Templar Assassin. Anti-Mage isn't too far behind, but once he gets that blink decker, look out. He's going to be scary. He's actually in the top lane right now, and he's very close to that broadsword. Last hit's going 73 in the way of the Death Prophet. And this is the thing, guys. It's not really any hard carries on this lineup right now. They needed to finish this game really early on. And they're doing a good job of it with pushing those Tier 2s. But Qual is going to get very scary. Legendary Dodo rotating in right now. He's actually going to go for a kill. It looks like on Quicked. He needs to be careful. But backup is here with the Batrider. Does the Batrider have its last? Yes, he does. He also has a Blink Dagger as well. Nice stuff there. Ice Path flying out, just barely missing. Quicked can blink out if he does send some danger, but doesn't. Psionic Trap up on the high ground right now. Alienated trying to get some more farm. It is a point booster plus the Ring of Health, so it's looking at this point to be uh, a Bloodstone instead of that uh, Aghanim Scepter that we see so often. To make this a very tanky Queen of Pains and actually smoke his pop tier from the side of AM at least on three. Refinery needs to be careful. He'll get ganked up here. He's got the blink dagger. He should blink away right now. He's looking for it, and he will blink up but not onto the high ground. This is not where you want to blink to, Refinery, unfortunately. We actually hear a cyanic trap going on a Flint Floss. He's taking a lot of damage. There will be some refraction damage. Ice Path will save his life momentarily. Shackle Shot not latching, though. Power Shot barely missing. Doesn't matter. He's got refraction up. There's the silence on the Quicked. Nice flame break coming in though, and they could look to turn this, and they're looking for the kill on Flint Flossy. It does gonna be popped as well. There's going to be the ice blast. There's nice, nice lasso onto Alien and Ren. Good ice path as well, plus the uh, macro pirate quick and taking a bunch of damage. Will it be able to get out of the question? Exorcism plus the sonic wave just barely missing, but he will in fact go down, and that was a whole team gank from the side of AM. They're looking to push here in the mid lane. Hysteria's got Exorcism up, Refinery trying to get out, he can flame, or Firefly, excuse me, in 5, Flame Break, just to get him away from him, some mid tower will go down, this gives some more time for Qual to farm, he does have his broadsword, and now he can contribute just a little bit to fights, he does need some more damage, he will be going for that Yasha soon, I imagine, rather than later, does actually miss that last hit, that's okay though, alienated. Finishing up the Perseverance, and this is going to get very scary very quickly for UT. But the good thing is they've been fighting 4v5 this entire game, essentially. Qual's been a participant in some of the kills. He has his battle fury now. 21 minutes. Not going to talk about the timing. Of course, everybody can get their battle fury quicker. It always can get quicker. But Qual needs it right now, and he does have it. Now he just needs to get a Yasha into a Mantis style on his treads as well. He can look to fight. Absolutely. Refinery, Refinery is looking to stack this up now that the battle fury is finished off. Nice plays there. And A&M... A lot of Bloodstones, so they will have a lot of tankiness on their side. They don't have a whole lot of damage. I want to see what uh, Night Stalker's building towards. He's got his BKB right now. He's got Phase Boots, but not a whole lot of damage on him. His right click will be out carried by the Anti Mage. He needs to pick up something for damage, and he My probably thanks. will do, uh, do that in just a moment here. Windrunner going for the Null Talisman plus Ring of Basilius. I would not be surprised to see something like uh, Mech come to the Windrunner, considering the Headrest just flew. I was actually going to say something like a uh, damaging item, but it's going to be a Mech instead, but. Uh, Damage going from the Queen of Pain, it's going to be coming from essentially a lot of the spells' abilities, so you'll have to keep that in mind. The good thing is, though, on the side of the Anti Mage, he's got this passive ability, that Spell Shield. It's 50% res resistance to magic, so in the team fights with his uh, illusions, he'll be able to take out a lot of people if he does, of course, decide to go for that Manta style. 
We see a whole 5-on-5 five five team fight looking to be brewing here, except for the fact that Hysteria is actually up in the top lane, looking to push the tier 3 right now. Big, oh, wow. Big, big amounts of uh, abilities coming out. There's the Ancient Apparition to kill on the Night Stalker. Does he have the buyback is the question. Meanwhile, Exorcism pushing the top lane here. We'll see a TP. Hysteria will have to back off. Q Kid is actually going to go on Hysteria right now. Silence for a few more seconds, and there's going to be the Sionic Track. Hysteria might be in some trouble here, but a lot of Exorcism damage. Wicked needs to be careful here. Of course, in this mill, not doing any damage right now. Ice Blast is actually going to miss. Wicked needs to wait for the Exorcism to pop off right now before he can really engage in this. TP coming out from Hysteria right now. Meanwhile, I'm actually missing a punch. A kill is actually two kills going for a uh, a &M right now. Wall is actually going to go down as well, so three for nothing right now. And that's the problem when you don't have Quicket. So really good split pushing coming in from the side of University of Te uh, excuse me A and M right now. You push down this lane here, have Quicket rotate in. That's a lot of your damage immediately gone from that fight. Then you initiate, get a favorable initiation with Ice Path, and you're in a good position. Yeah, I'm down for 22 seconds. Levels looking. Uh, Interesting. A and M at 15, or excuse me, Temple Ascension at 15. A and M has two heroes, one at 14, one at 13, above the anti mage right now, which is a good position to be in. 24 minutes into the game, and they're taking the tier ones, and they're pushing it in, and it's actually, uh, I think anti mage is starting to run out of time, and he realizes this. He needs to get in the jungle. He cannot carry the game by himself just yet. We'll be TPing to the mid lane right now. He needs to get some farm. And he's actually going to go for the Ancient Stack here. It's only been stacked once, but there's plenty of farm for him right now. He needs to get his treads. He's taking a ton of damage, though. He can't take this just yet. Meanwhile, the series is actually in kind of a bad position. We'll walk right into it. There's the last one on Hysteria. He should be going down for sure here. Girl Strike going to come in as well. Nice chaining of the stuns. Hysteria will, in fact, go down. And it's been annoying this entire game, so UT really wants to take care of him. And they do, in fact, do that. Down for 50 seconds. Bloodstone not finished just yet. Very close, though. It's the point booster plus the uh, bit booster to finish that off. Wall trying to get some farm here, but he's not aware of this gank happening from AM. Nice shackle shot. Quell will be in some trouble. There's the silence. He should be going down. TP's coming in. He, in fact, will go down. Good gank there. Quick is going to look for a kill. Flint Foss takes his damage. There's going to be the psionic trap. Ice Path, no. Macro Pyre first. Quick it. In some trouble. Ice Path will fly out. Girl Strike coming in. Will he pop the epicenter? Actually, Girl Strike right in into the Macro Pyre, taking some damage. Two strong hits and in some trouble. Nice blink away from Alienated Masses. There's the Ice Black going to miss. No lasso just yet. He's looking for more damage, though. Sticking Napalm, of course, does have that slowing effect. They're looking for more. Blink going to come in from Templar Assassin. Blade of Black Green on her, by the way. No, they're not going to push this too much. The real good thing, though, is that Anti Mage got ganked. And I am making him just pay for actually nothing, really. Yeah, he was just in a bad position. Trap going to fly for Alienated. He'll blink up onto the high ground here. And Quicket is going to be chasing nothing right now. So... What looked to be a relatively close game, I think A&M is starting to pull away, not because they're really winning in any sort of category. They have a really large gold advantage, but the problem is they're really denying A&M any farm. He's not been able to get any room. He doesn't have his treads yet at 26 minutes into the game. And it's looking right now they're going to extend this to Tier 3. They're in a very favorable position, but that could change. And we'll have to wait and see. Ward being popped up here. Vision has been pretty nice for both teams right now. Quick is actually going to be taking this ancient farm, or at least partly. Going for a Yasha right now, instead of something like a Desolator, which we usually see. But of course, the Yasha is nice to get that attack speed. They does decide to go for Mantis Style Legions. Meanwhile, we're actually going to see a rotation from Hysteria. They're looking for more kills. They want to be aggressive. They're actually going to take this ancient stack. But uh, we haven't, I don't know if we've seen an Epicenter at all. He doesn't have a Blink Dagger. He's been tough. He's actually going to get silenced. Nice silence. There's going to be a lot of damage right now. AM is actually going to get a triple kill. Last one's going to fly in and looking to get a kill there. There's going to be a triple kill inside of Hysteria right now. They're going to take the station farming. And I'm very poised to take this to a game three. And the anti mage pick isn't going too well for them right now. They're running out of time. There's only boots of uh, belts of strength on him right now. He will take this tower real quick. Dota trying to deny it. But that being said, tier two is actually being pushed in mid. No fortification available either. This tower is going to go down. There's nothing to defend this. In one second, we will see the uh, both two heroes up right now, the Sand King and the Ancient Apparition, but this tower should be theirs. I'm only leaving one tier 
two on the map or on the side of AM. So this is what they needed to do against the AM pickup. They needed to be aggressive. They needed to be ganking Qual and consistently. They've been doing so. They've been winning the team fights. They've been really playing extraordinarily well. Bloodstone finished up on the Queen of Pain. So really great play for AM. Not really bad play from University of Texas, though. They've been playing really well. Quick had a really good early to mid game, but it's getting to the point right now where, I mean, the thing is, once again, they have the later game, but uh, 12th Man Yolo looking to go for apparently that Agatham Scepter. He will have that point booster, giving them that vision, and of course, the damage coming out from Hysteria is a lot. You remember that Exorcism is physical damage. That's the thing that you have to keep in mind, so you have to really understand that. Of course, the Bloodstone going to make her tanky as well. Pretty poor item on the Death Prophet. And uh, he's been getting a lot of kills, Hysteria has, so. Smoke Gang coming out on the side of AM. They're maybe looking down here in this bottom lane. Qual backing off into the jungle right now. Donald is actually going to be getting a TP, and Qual looking for a kill. He's actually going to get slowed and alienated. He's actually going to uh, pop an end this room right now. There's going to be the Ice Pass that will latch off. Qual will just blink out momentarily. Shadow Strike on him. He's going to have to blink in another second. Shaft and Shot will not fly. Donald, although, is not as lucky. He's going to go down. And we see Quicket rotating in as well, and I don't know if they can fight this, but they really want to. Quicket is in a bad position. Shackle Shack going to fly. Melt damage went out as well. He's going to go down. Quicket will fly Anything down very quickly. Comes in no refraction the there. It doesn't look like. And now UT cannot fight this. They have to back up, and I think now it's time for Anum to put some pressure on this bottom tower. 48 seconds before this uh, Templar Assassin's up. No buyback available. 300 gold in the bank right now. I have not seen an epi settle from too strong. He needs to hit one if he ever he needed to hit one right now. Refinery has got to the blink dagger. Could be going for a lasso here. I would not be surprised to see a blink lasso real quick. Ice path it will be available though. He's sitting on the side of the really great position and from the Jukiro. There's going to be the ice blast. Going to try to push them back here. No mech is available to heal them up regardless. Actually it is. It's on uh, the Windrunner. I think it was a little too early that they had that ice blast on them. I don't know if that really helped because you, know, you can't heal through the ice blast. Yeah, so it might have been just a little too early on that heal, but that's fine. They'll back off. They took the tower. They're happy with that. Now they need to do the task of pushing into the tier 3s. What I think they should do is go for a Roshan attempt right now. I don't think they can stop them. And that's exactly what they're going to do. They're going to run the Rosh Pit. They're going to pop the Exorcism. And this is going to go down very quickly. You look how Exorcism does so much damage to Roche, and of course the damage from everybody else. Shackle Shot will latch on him as well. That's pretty funny. That's pretty uh, comical to look at. That giant Shackle Shot going to this tree over here. Ice Blast will fly out. We'll actually hit, but I don't think they're going to care. They're going to take this Roche attempt in. While we do see a rotation coming in from Quicket right now, they're going to take Roshan. It will be picked up by a Death Prophet. However, this could be a bad team fight. Quicket is going to go down instantaneously from Exorcism, though. Brewster coming in. Is it going to go for the epicenter? It is Chantel, but it did get stopped. Oh my goodness, excellent Jackal shot there. The Sonic Wave is going to come out as well. And they're cleaning this up. Refinery taking some damage while he's in the Ice Path. Hysteria has been uh, busted up. Silence coming in as well. Qual is down. Quick is down. They have no right click right now. Refinery is silenced. He's going to go down as well. Four for one trade. Oh no. UT, you're in a bad position. Donald looks like he'll probably go down. Might be getting out. No, just barely surviving. No stuns there. He TP it actually to the, uh, the tier three tower down here. AM looking extraordinarily strong though. 10k gold for both the Queen, or net worth I should say, for the Queen of Pain, as well as the Death Prophet, who's uh, building towards what looks to be a pipe. Yep, is actually going to build the headdress, plus the uh, very close to the cloak, just needs the Ring of Health, which is at the side shop, by the way. You have to buy that, or the secret shop. There's Death Class on this area. Not going to be a whole lot of damage though. Alienated. Pushing in right now with that 16 charges in the Bloodstone. It's kind of a lot. Hysteria has uh, 10. It doesn't matter, though, because he's got a freaking Aegis. So, whatever. At least for another 6 minutes. And now I think AM just needs to finish this game. Antimage has no room to farm, really. He's got a Blade of Alacrity plus a Band of Elven Skin. But that Mantis style is going to be way too late. Quicked with the Yash and the Blink. But uh, UT looking like they're going to be heading to a game 3 here. And they need to refocus and re... You know, restrat... Re yeah, Restrategize. At least I didn't say strategy. 32 minutes into the game. A&M looking really strong. They're taking this into the mid-game. And they should not be giving any sort of room here to this anti-mage. And I think he uh, he needs to be careful here. He can't uh, he really can't afford to die again. Mystic Staff on the Queen of Pain will be building that Hextic or Sheev's Guard. But I imagine it will be that Scythe of Eyes. And that Disable onto either Quicket on onto on the anti-mage will be really important. He's going to finish up this Yasha. And he'll have that. And that's a little bit of right-click. 
the tankiness of Hysteria and Alienated right now is a lot. It's very frustrating. The Shackle shots from Legendary Dodo has been really perfect every time around, even on the Roshan. And that's saying something. When your Shackles are perfect on Roach, it's pretty good. University of Texas, I think what they really can benefit from is Smoke Ganks, which I haven't seen any of right now in this, in this entire series. Qual is actually going to get silenced right now. There's the Sonic Wave. The Sonic will only last for a few more seconds. He should be able to get out of here after that with that blink. Slow coming in from Quicked. Nice shot. The shot will not last. The Qual will be silenced again from Mysteri. He will, in fact, go down. Quicked looking for more kills. There's the Exorcist being popped. Another silence going down. Quicked will go down as well. This should be the Tier 3. Legendary Dodo getting a double kill there. Nice plays. They're looking, this actually, this delaying has been pushed uh, back to their tier 1 or where their tier 1 was. And they're pinging mid right now, though. It looks like they're going to head straight down mid to look for a kill here. Exorcism has been popped, which is, it's all on cooldown for another 79 seconds, but uh, it's going to stay up for just a few more seconds. And it'll be tough to fight into this tier 3 right now, though. They'll be back up by the time they get there, or at least uh, the anti-mage will. Quick, it's another story. 12th man with the Aghanim Scepter plus the BKB. He's got vision pretty much everywhere. You want to see the vision of the Night Stalker through the trees. Anywhere he moves around, he's got vision. There's actually a ward here as well, so... I don't know if he's got the high ground vision. It's actually daytime right now, so there it goes. It goes away from them, so... Flame Break trying to really defend this tower. Fortification not available. Ice Path going to try to push them away from this. This tier 3 should be going down. anti mage should be up, but Quick is the real problem that they're worrying about here. Tower is very close. Ice Path or Ice Blast going to fly out. Will just barely miss, and they're going to back off. This tower is not in deny range. They accomplished what they wanted to accomplish, and Invis Room has actually popped up for the uh, Queen of Pain. They're actually sitting right outside the base. They're waiting for them to make a mistake and come out and look for a gank here or a kill. And they need to be careful because the Sonic Wave actually not ready, surprise. But the damage from the Queen of Pain is still very strong, and uh, they're sitting here in the mid, looking for a kill right now. You need to be careful. There's going to be an initiation from Alien. He might go down. Blink coming in. Nice shot. Shot onto two. There's the power shot onto two. Strong silence as well. You need to get some more kills. The Qual will be voided up. He silence as well. There's no uh, night time right now. Too strong taking a lot of damage. As strong as as well. Nice little invis there. Alien and getting a kill actually on the uh, Ancient Apparition. He will go down. There's going to be the Scream of Pain. Qual trying to fight here. Nice shackle shot. No, it doesn't latch. Power shot going to fly in as well. And they can turn around. I mean, everybody's low. They should be really looking for this tier 3 right now. And they're not going to back off. Anim should be able to take this and maybe even force the Rex. There's the Exorcism. They'll definitely going to be able to take this. Fortification is available, but they really won't be able to stop this. It's going to be a long time. Silence is there. Praxis should be going down. I think this should be GG for an Anim at this point, right? I mean, they played so well this entire game. There's the fortification. Pull these fires up on the Zero Dodo. They have the mech. They've got the items. And too Strong doesn't have a blink there. You look at his farm. It's very, very behind right now. Ice Blast is going to fly out. Fly out. Hysteria taking a nice little blast of the face. He has his age. He'll be back up. Maybe he does not go down, which he will. Ice Path coming in. There's the Scream of Pain. Everybody's frozen. Sonic Wave going to fly out. Getting the kill onto two right now, both on anti Mage and the Sand King. Chasing is for Wicked. Monster kill for the side of Queen of Pain with the triple kill going out. Killing spree for 12th Man Yellow. He's going to actually uh, go down, but we will see a buyback from the Sand King. Quicken's here as well. Shack and Shot not going to last, but Quicken's actually in a lot of trouble. Will go down. And Sand King's here. And this actually, this one's been pushed all the way back here. We'll see a TP coming in from Flint Floss. He wants to push this back here. Uh, and now the range racks will go down, and it looks like we will see a rotation out for an AM. They've taken what they wanted to take, and now they're going to back off. Or let's just take the range racks real quick first. Radiance middle barracks have fallen. DD rune will be picked up, maybe. No, just pinged out. I'm gonna uh, give it to alienated, I imagine. She'll bottle that right up. Once again, this is the CDL. I'm mock casting for you. This is going to be University of Texas and Texas A&M. And right now, it's looking like it'll go to a game three. Um, if A&M can really uh, put the cap on this game. Anti-Mage has had no room to farm. He's got a Yasha right now. And not really close to a uh, Mantis style, though. He still needs that ultimate orb. There's not a whole lot of items for this Radiant side. They've got a lane of racks missing as well. And Hysteria with this pushing lineup. With his uh, Exorcism, of course. Alienated with his Bloodstone as well. The Shackle shots from Moonrunner have been absolutely spectacular. Force that's available for him as well. Refinery. With the Hood of Defiance. 
building that uh, pipe as quickly as possible, which has been finished on the side of a and by the way. Yeah, he's looking really strong. We'll be pushing into this tier 2 bot. Ice Path going to fly out, only going to hit uh, Alienated, plus the debuff going on the side of these heroes. Once again, popping that mech. Exorcist is up right now. We're going to actually see from Fossey warding real quick, and now we see the initiation here in this mid lane. Cal will fly down. No, uh, no fortification available. Shock shot going to fly. Not going to latch very close though. And there we we're going to hear a lasso coming out on the side. Alienated. We're actually going to see a silence though. Nice, a lot of damage. Macro pyre onto too strong. We're actually going to see Qual go down. Get in the kill is the nice sucker. Plus the Sonic Cliff going out as well. Get in the kill. Godlike streak for him. Nice shot shot once again from Dodo. Ice path flying in. Bottom barracks will go down right now. They can't defend this. This should be GG right now. There's going to be the Psionic Trap coming in on the side of Alienated. Ice Blast coming in, hitting onto Hysteria already at full health, pretty much. Legendary Dodo not really in any particular predicament as well. Meanwhile, coming in quick and looking for more kills here. Wolfman Yellow. X Stick coming on to quicker right now. He's going to be taking some damage. There's going to be silence as well. Nice shackle shot somehow onto two. Refinery going to pitch the damage. He'll go down. And they should be able to push this mid and end. No GG called out just yet. Now they will. Really great game so far. And what AM wanted to accomplish was just pushing mid. Or pushing, actually, just pushing in general. I don't know why there's a pause here. a and really just wanted to accomplish just pushing mid. Or, or pushing, pushing in general. Getting a and off of his game. Ganking him as much as possible and really keeping that uh, pressure on him. They, they really did. Really great game from a and Of course, UT played really well as well. Wicked had a lot of good ganks early on. The real problem was there were no epicenters. And I mean, uh, Too Strong just had a tough time, honestly. He just had a very tough time in this game. But we'll get into the next game. Once again, I apologize for the first game's lack of really good casting. But the second game was hopefully a lot of fun for you guys. And we'll get into the next one in just a moment, so hold on tight.